Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala syafi al-anbiya Mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Alhamdulillah We continue our discussion in chapter 4 And the subtopic is on the nature of guilt eh? And uh, the previous video I've explained to you generally How the Islamic perspective of guilt being a very negative reinforcement and it is a form of punishment so again uh, i'll just read a few paragraphs and then we'll have a short discussion these are the writings of professor muhammad mahdi jenkins or john jenkins all right from our book is post islamic psychology yeah many things exist as potential which if expressed would be unnatural I would use guilt as an example. So guilt is a very unnatural trait within human, uh, holistic human behavior. Obviously, does, guilt does exist. Guilt is a combined acknowledgement of having done wrong. And the belief that having done wrong makes you a bad person. So this is the definition of guilt. You have done wrong and then you keep thinking that you are a bad, a, a bad person, a bad person, a bad person. And in the end, you uh, become psychologically... Uh, influence and that uh, causes a lot of problem from anxiety to depression to uh, all kind of other psychological problems that, that you're going to face because you naturally don't see yourself as a good person you see yourself as a bad person and continuously reinforcing in your automatic thoughts this badness now there is nothing harmful in anyone acknowledging that they have done wrong so it's, it is not harmful for you to acknowledge uh, I have done. I have done wrong. I have done sin, uh, in the, in, uh, or I have done something bad. All right. The harm comes from believing ourselves to be bad because we have done a wrong thing. So a wrong thing, if we think that inshallah we can correct it, uh, can be uh, is Allah is most merciful and forgiving. So there is uh, there is a way out through maghfirah and the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Believing. Ourselves bad because we have acted wrongly is an internal form of punishment. So that is an internal form of punishment through our inner speech eh? or automatic thoughts. The wrong, the wrong action is the response, which is followed by the thoughts saying either directly or indirectly, I am bad, I am bad, I am bad, or I am no good, I am hopeless, and all that I am negative input that we get. That thought acts as a negative stimulus. When a response follows by a negative stimulus, it often reduces the likelihood of that response occurring again in the future. So, when you do that, then you tend to absorb this negativity and it becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger problem. Just like a, a little pebble, if you roll it down, all right, a little mud ball, you roll it down the hill, the mud ball will pick up more mud. And finally, as it rolls over, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and that becomes a burden to your internal environment uh, in terms of your psychological well-being. In fact, there's no difference in the way that external or internal influences affects our future action. And no one would punish themselves by guilt if they had not been conditioned to do so. So this is, in terms of loss of learning, this is a conditioning you know, behavior that it is adapted and learned. It's a learned hopelessness, learned helplessness, learn guilt. Eh? The human mind has all the necessary human characteristics which allow guilt to be expressed. These abilities exist only as a potential until conditioning bring about this expression. So these are potentialities. We can take either uh, to reduce this conditioning by uh, seeking help, by, seeking, uh, uh, by developing a positive worldview, and then uh, seeking forgiveness from our friends, whoever we have wronged, or the other person, or to Allah, or whatever it is. And then, that will then reduce the guilt. But if we internalize this guilt and condition it to be part of our psyche, then it will be a tremendous burden on us. The main requirement is self-reflective consciousness. So this is where the solution is, how are we going to be good? We must be able to inculcate self-reflective consciousness. That is, a mind which can consider the past and the future symbolically, sim, symbolically symbols. Eh? So we can see the past as a symbolic thing and the future as a symbolic thing. And how we can navigate this life symbolically through the path of goodness, the path of 
uh, Iman and so on Self-reflective consciousness is so-called because it is able to reflect on what has occurred in the past and make prediction as to the future happenings A being who can reflect on their past behavior has the opportunity to judge that past behavior as to whether it is it was successful or unsuccessful, wise or unwise, good or bad, helpful or harmful, and so on, etc. Self-reflective consciousness also have the ability to create any combination of symbols which are known to it. That means any possible thoughts can arise in the mind. These attributes of the self-reflective consciousness are sufficient to allow guilt to be created. It is also sufficient for us to take the other way route for us to eliminate or reduce guilt. So both ways are possible. Eh? So what is important is when we develop these symbols in our mind That means I'm bad is a symbol I'm good is a symbol It is all in your consciousness How you manipulate I, I should not use the word manipulate How you shape uh, In psychology you shape this uh, self-reflective consciousness Towards goodness Is an opportunity because you are given free will by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It is up to you to mold it Regardless of the circumstantial So in our model, we have explain, explained to you about how you are affected by your physical environment Your interest environment and your social environment And then your inner speech So all your past bad experiences and guilt can be removed If you harness the power of your positive inner speech That is your self-reflective consciousness To be able to understand and see a better future for yourself, a better life, a better way of resolving your existence on this earth in the way that is positive, in the way that is ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the way that is uh, revealed upon our, 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 holy, our holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the believer of Allah. He brought about this idea and he is the greatest psychologist. You can see throughout his life of how he mentor and give advice. It's all in the hadith. Where if we use study, you can see the way forward is for us to reduce our sense of guilt And to look into the future as a glorious, peaceful, happy, fulfilling future in this dunya So in Islam, we are told that we have sufferings, we have problems, we have guilt But that is part and parcel of life which we can reduce So if we say that life is full of guilt we can reduce that guilt by first avoiding that uh, action that allows this guilt to proliferate in ourselves and then take the action to, of abstinence and then mold and shape our self-reflective inner speech towards goodness. And this is the way how our whole Prophet Muhammad Wasallam counseled his sahabas, the converts to Islam and the challenges that they face in life. There are so many challenges. From the challenges of being tortured, uh, from the challenges of migration, from the challenges of being ostracized and made uh, boycotted and made, uh, made the community of Muslims uh, starving, starvation, uh, from the challenges of attacks by the enemies of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and so on. So many incidents in the life bring about all kinds of challenges, but the end result is a positive worldview Even to the extent that if one of the Sahabis are become a Shaheed It is also can be a positive aspect Because in Islam we have this continuum of not only the physical existence But the spiritual existence Not only about this dunya but also so about the akhirah So we have a beautiful approach in resolving the issue of Past guilt, eh? as I mentioned earlier on, in the times of Jahiliyyah, many of the companions that are in were also doing a lot of evil, a lot of things that they feel guilty about. They come about to the Prophet, and the Prophet gave them sound and wonderful advice of forgiveness, of maqfira, of mercy, of grace, of love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that they can hold on to with the hope, and with that they can change themselves and transform. Not only they transform themselves. The Sahabas, the Tabi'in and the Tabi Tabi'in transform the world This is the fastest growing deen, Islam And even today, there are many of our great scholars, our ustas, our, our preachers uh, That are bringing about this beautiful change And seeing the beautiful life that they lead 
and also some of them leading evil lives. For example, we have good Muslim brothers and sisters who lived 20 to 30 years in the prisons of America. When they were released, they become alims, they become good Muslims, they become mentors, teachers to the Ummah. And you can see this happening throughout the world. So whatever guilt they have done, maybe they, have, they could have been murderers, they have murdered 20 or 30 people, but when they turn around, they remove or reduce that sense of guilt and ask for forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exercise their self reflective self-consciousness, their inner speech towards goodness, inshallah, they would then be able to harness their human potential to be the true and sincere servant of Allah. That is, we are striving towards perfection in striving to, be, to make ourselves good, helping others to be good and making the world good, inshallah.